If you've ever tried to make a character in the past, you may have found that it's not quite gone to plan. So if your character's heads look a little bit like this, then this is the video for you. Now this is a bit of a controversial take, but we're going to start by using the default cube. So straight up in object mode, hit Ctrl 2 on your keyboard, and this will add a subdivision surface modifier. You can also do this by using the add modifier menu. And immediately what we're going to do is press Ctrl A when we hover over this modifier here. And this will actually apply the modifier. So when we come into edit mode, we've got a little bit more geometry to work with. But we're not going to start in edit mode, we're actually going to come across to sculpt mode. Now don't panic when I say sculpt mode, you'll see what I mean, it's really simple. So start off by grabbing the elastic deform tool just here, and then enable X symmetry just up here. And if we come across into side view with number three on the keyboard, we can grab this object and we can kind of start to shape it into the shape of a face. So this would be the front of the face, this is the chin, this is the base of the neck, back of the head. So we can just kind of shove that in there, maybe make that a little bit more flat there. So we've got the chin and then we can come across to the front and then I'm just going to squeeze in the sides of the head just like that. It's dead simple. Now at this stage, what you'd probably be wanting to do is deciding what the overall shape of the head is going to look like. So if you wanted like a really thin chin, for example, you could pull that right in. If you wanted a big fat jaw, then you could do that as well. So this shape just gives you a rough silhouette of the character. So that's all we need to do in sculpt mode for the time being. Let's come back across to edit mode now. So when we look at this, we have a number of faces that we can work with. So these faces here, this is going to be around the forehead. The eyes are going to be around here and the mouth is going to be within this section. Well, the mouth and nose are going to be within this section. So what we can do, first of all, is we can take this whole area here. If you press I on the keyboard, this will inset these faces and it'll give us this loop around the side here. Now, the next thing we want to do is take this line that runs around the head and we're going to press Control B to bevel this and this is just going to add some more geometry for us. What we can do is we can add four segments to this. Now, if we take these two faces and these two faces, again with eye to inset, we can make some eyes. And what we need to do is we just need to add another loop here and this will just give us three, six, seven, eight points around the eyes. It's a nice number to work with. But don't worry too much about the actual points. So what we can do now is we can inset these again. It just gives us a little bit more geometry to work with. And then we can extrude these inwards. Now, I like to do that directly on the Y axis just to keep things nice and straight. And then we can scale these down by clicking on individual origins. And this will scale this down. You can put a loop cut just in here, just add a little bit more geometry. And that's all we need to do on the eyes for the minute. Next, what we need to do is decide how big the mouth's going to be. So you could take the mouth in this entire width of this area, or you could take it to a smaller area like this. So what we'll do first is we'll just put another loop cut here. Then we'll take this section and then we'll inset this. Then we'll take these faces here and we'll inset these as well. And then we'll extrude along the Y axis again, scale that down, and then we'll add a couple more loops here. The next thing we need to do is we need to sort out the ears. Now ears typically run in line with the eyes. So around here is a good point. Now you need to decide whether you want small ears or large ears. So you could justifiably go all the way down to here. You could just as easily use an ear about this sort of size. So let's make some massive ears in this case. Now what I want to show you as well is that it can be a bit of a pain working on both sides of the mesh. So I'm not going to, I'm going to do this really lazy. So we're just going to work with these three faces here. And so I'm going to inset these and I'm going to inset them again. And then I'm going to extrude out just to about here and extrude here again. And then in top view, I'm just going to kind of grab this, rotate it. It doesn't matter too much about the faces not being perfect, not looking like an ear or anything like that. What we can also do is if you want a, like an earlobe that kind of hangs down, you can extrude this out to make kind of like a, a hanging dangly earlobe. I don't really want that. So I'm just going to delete that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take all these faces except this one here. And I'm going to inset them and be quite generous with the inset as well. And then we can extrude these inwards here. We can grab and grab these can inset them as well. There we go. So there we have a kind of a, a very rough ear. And feel free to just move things around just to help guide. Although it's not essential, not at this stage. 
Now, don't forget to save because we don't want all that hard work going to waste. So what we need to do as well is consider the nose and the brow. So there's different things you can do here depending on what look you're going for. So, so you can take all these faces here and you can grab them on the Y axis and it'll give you a pretty defined brow. What you can also do is you can take these faces and you can maybe extrude them and this will just give you a little bit more of a defined brow. So ultimately it's up to you as to what route you want to take. I'm just going to grab these and I'm just going to maybe take these as well. And okay, so we'll take the whole brow, grab that on the Y. There we go. Now this is going to be the, the nose section. So what we can do is we can sort of take these, grab those on the Y, just like that. And you can see nose is coming out. Alternatively, you could extrude these if you wish. So let's just say, uh, yeah, we'll just extrude these two just like this on the Y axis because noses can be all sorts of funny shapes. There we go. Okay. So we've got a bit of a lopsided fella at this point. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come across into sculpt mode again. And the first thing we're going to do before we do anything else is we're going to come across here, make sure the X axis mirror is enabled, but also in this drop down, we want to symmetrize it. And we want to go from positive X to negative X. So positive to negative. So this side's the positive, this side's the negative. I always seem to model on the positive X. I don't know why, that's just me. You might like doing it on the negative. Just make sure that you set the orientation the way you want it to go. And then all we do is we press symmetrize. And this makes sure that everything matches across, especially when we're on such a low level of detail. We want to get it right from the beginning. Okay. So next step that we need to do, what we're going to do is we're going to press control three on the keyboard and like the subdivision surface modifier we put on previously, this one's actually going to add a multi-res modifier. It's very, very similar to the subdivision surface modifier, but there's a few more things about it, which are suited to sculpting. So what we're going to do to begin with is we're going to grab the elastic deform tool again. And the way this works is you can increase or decrease the size just using the square bracket keys, or you can use the F key and change how far this will influence things. So what we can do is we can make it relatively small and we can start pushing the eyes, just literally using the mouse and just nudging things into the direction that we want. So we can sort of shape the, the default rest pose, change the shape of the nose if you want it to be a little more pointy or whatever change the mouth a little bit but that mouth that mouth is pretty is all right for a default mouth and we can go into the ears so we can push these around these sometimes need a little bit of manipulation to get them looking right because we are going from a square to kind of a i don't know what what shapes an ear a roundish shape so what we can do with the ears is because we need a place for the sound going we can use this draw brush here and using control because if you draw it'll bop on there but if you press control it will sort of dig in and we, we kind of need to make a place for the sound to go just in there and then we can use the same draw tool to just kind of add a little, little bit of detail here just like this just make a little wiggly curve ears are all random everyone's different so it doesn't really matter too much and there we go we have some massive ears now what i want to do just dead quick is i want to just shade this smooth just because I prefer it that way. And then it's going to tab back and uh, it just looks a little bit better. So what we can start doing now is we can start adding on sort of brows here and we can use the crease brush to sort of define lines like under the eyes, just like this. And maybe around here, there we go. Pop in a little crease here perhaps, around the nose where the nostrils would be. Probably put some nostrils in here as well. So if we take the draw brush again, I want to make that just a little bit smaller using control. We can just dig right into there. Let's just go back to object mode and we can see that this is not changing in object mode. And that's because we've got the local viewport level set to zero. If we increase it to one, it will increase the subdivision amount. And then we can go all the way up to three because that's the resolution amount that we've been sculpting at. We don't really want it set to three in the viewport. We can pop that down to zero again. What I like to do, and this is just not a visual thing, this is quite useful, is if you come down to shape and then apply base, and then we go into edit mode, we can see how this has changed to be very, very similar 
to the high resolution version. And this is great because you could actually use these for low poly characters in games or whatever. So if you're not looking for that high level of detail, then you can like go with this, which is absolutely awesome. Or you can maybe like this, for example, and so on and so forth. So what we can do now is we can add with shift A, a UV sphere, and I'm going to shade that smooth. So that's, by the way, that's W, then shade smooth. And then I'm just going to grab this on the X axis. I'm going to scale that down just like that. And then press control A and apply the scale. Come into edit mode, rotate X 90. And this is just to change the way that the faces are pointing. I'm going to come back into object mode. And then if you come to face projects and then center in this snapping menu, and if you grab your eyeball and then hover your mouse over this socket and then hold control, it will position it on the surface of the socket. It just makes it really simple to get it in a good position. Now we can go to the add modifier. We can grab a mirror modifier and we can pop that onto the surface of the, the face and that will mirror it across this object. Now all we need to do is just adjust it until it kind of fits in place, which is really cool. And then just apply the scale again. Any time that you scale something in object mode, you really want to be looking at applying the scale if that is the default scale that you want it to be. You can also change the scale in edit mode and then you don't need to adjust the scale in object mode. But so long as you know the two different ways that you can do that. Now, there's one thing that I want to do on the head again. So if we come into edit mode and we can take this edge here on the forehead, and then if we come right around the back and hold control and we're going to select all of this here, we're going to keep going and selecting right the way through to the chin. And we're going to press U and we're going to say mark seam. We're also going to come in and we're going to select the loop around the ear, which is just there and just there. And we're going to again mark seam. We're going to come into the eyes as well. And we're going to U mark seam and then same for the mouth U mark seam so if you select everything with the a key and then we press u again and we're going to go on unwrap if we come across the uv editing we'll see the face just here so we've got like the main skin and then we've got like the eyes and things here and and one thing to know i've just spotted this now i'll show you a way to find this if we come to select select overlap we can see there that these things that these vertices are overlapping on the unwrap which isn't the best thing that we could be wanting. So we can see there that's for the ear and we can see there that this is intersecting and we don't really like intersecting geometry. It does happen and it's not the end of the world. It's mainly because of the multi-res modifier that we've done and not having a lot of geometry in there. That's why it's kind of overlapping. But in terms of UV, we don't really want things overlapping anyway. What we can do is we can use this relax tool and see if this can fix it for us and there we go let's just pull it back into place so dead simple there if we go to select select overlap then there's nothing there so that's all we need to do on that remember to keep saving so at this stage you've got a pretty decent looking basic head shape and if you're happy with that then absolutely fantastic you can go ahead and add more details but what i would definitely say is don't add lots of little details until you are 100 percent happy with everything we can see here these creases that I've put in. When we come across into object mode, they're barely visible. You can see a little bit of these creases just here, but this is because we've got the local viewport set to one subdivision. If we turn that off, they completely disappear. And the reason that's important is because you may need to make changes to the base mesh. Now let me, let me demonstrate what can go wrong. So in edit mode, you may feel like you need some extra geometry at a place. Let's say, for example, we want a massive thing jutting out. Or we want lots of geometry there, blah, blah, blah. Okay. When we come back to sculpt mode, it's all a bit broken. And you can fix this with a smooth tool, but sometimes that can cause issues depending on where you put in the extra geometry. For example, you may need it in the mouth. So you can come into object mode and we can just click delete higher. And then that will remove everything above that, that level. Then we can come into edit mode and we can add any extra geometry that we need. Now this shouldn't be an issue for you deleting those higher levels because really you shouldn't be adding those extra levels of detail until you're completely happy. So if we come back into sculpt mode, what we can do is we can add more subdivision levels. 
Generally speaking, I like to work on level three. It's a good level of detail, although level four is great for actually putting in some very fine details. So now you can adjust the face to pretty much any shape that you want. Just making those final adjustments to get to the right, right sort of face shape. Now you might want to do some kind of extreme positions of various things, make it really abstract and surreal. One thing I might suggest to you is if you come across to edit mode and come across to your materials and add a new material and we can just call it loops. And what we can do is we can select edge loops like this, for example, and say go to select and then select loops and select loop in a region. And then we can assign this material to this particular, these particular faces. And we can maybe, if we wanted to, to these, to this, for example, if we wanted to the, around the face, and then we can just hit assign. Now what we can do is if we scroll down on the material and come down to viewport display, where we see color, we can just change this to a different color, just like this. Now this doesn't affect the actual material, but it'll show up in the solid viewport. So now when we come back into sculpt mode, we can see exactly where our loops are coming. So we can we can stretch things out and we can see there if we wanted a bigger mouth, it's starting to pull on this section here. So we might actually want to change this section instead. And it just gives you an, a nice visual guide as to where things are. I love the flexibility this gives me. It makes making characters really easy and simple. So when you've got a shape that you're happy with, you can increase the subdivision levels to level four and you can go ahead and add the finer details. So what we can do now is when we're happy with all the details, we can come across into the material preview and we can add some materials. So we need a good skin material. So if we come across to the shading tab and focus on the object, what I like to do is I like to start with an input node, ambient occlusion. We pop that in there and we drag the ambient occlusion output and we type in ramp and this will give us a color ramp. Next, we take the color and we plug it into the base color. Also plug it into the subsurface color and turn the subsurface to 0.1. And we need to find a decent skin color. So I generally add a little bit of pink to it, just like this. If when you decrease the value of the color, it looks good, then you're probably on to a winner. What you can do is you can hover your mouse over the color and press Control C. Click on this little node here and press Control V. And then you can just adjust the slider to make it a little bit darker. And then if you crush it down a little bit, get a bit more contrast bring those to about there. That's how I generally set up the material. I'll push the roughness all the way up and the specular all the way down. So if we look at this in rendered preview, it doesn't look too bad. I feel this is a really nice skin texture for stylized characters. And while we're in this rendered preview, we may as well work on the eyes. So we'll start with the white part of the eyes. This is super simple. I just crank the roughness all the way down and the specular all the way up. Now if we come into edit mode, and select this middle vertice and then press control tab a few times and it'll select these next we can create a new material and we can call this iris that's the colored part of the eye and we can hit assign similar process specular up roughness down and we can change the color to uh, maybe pink for example and then control minus again and then we'll add a new material and we'll call this pupil turn that all the way to black specular up roughness down and then we simply assign it to there and then we have some pretty decent basic eyeballs okay so that covers the basics of how to make really easy and simple characters in future videos we can look at things like adding details adding hair animating the faces and then we can look at creating a body as well so if that's something that interests you and if you've liked this video then maybe hit that subscribe button and you'll get notified when when the next installment of this video comes out.